He was zooming and then fell. I just wanted to ask that because Daniel, if he was black, they would have asked him to play tight end. Cause, cause <laughs> six five, two thirty five. Who says no? <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> Riley Rhymes, Notre Dame. Riley Leonard committed Shocker. to Notre Dame this morning. Shocker. Riley Rhymes is going to Notre Dame, and Notre Dame just keeps plucking these ACC Ivy League S schools. Mm -hmm. We got a Wake Forest quarterback. Now we got a Duke quarterback. I don't know who the North Carolina quarterback is going to be next year, but watch the fuck out. Watch out. <laughs> Virginia might have a good one for him this in whole, 2025. Virginia, just going to just the tour, just going down. It's it's funny because Riley Leonard, first of all, this is tampering at his finest. And I know for a fact Notre Dame started tampering middle of the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obvious, right? Everyone knew he's going to Notre Dame before the portal opened. Right. Like, like it's very clear tampering is going on. I don't know. We act like. I don't even think we act like it. I think everyone just knows it's illegal. Everyone's mm -hmm. doing it. No one says shit, but it ma it makes like other teams wonder what is illegal that is actually enforceable. Like, what are you going to actually get mad at NCAA? And then Connor Steins has the biggest cheating scandal in NCAA history. Right. Like, because we don't know what's legal and what's not because everybody breaks the rules anyway. For Riley Leonard and, and I guess for, for Notre Dame, it's funny because they tried to make this seem like it was more of a recruitment than it was Yeah, the whole way through. Remember, he entered the portal with a no contract tag. People at Ohio State were kind of getting fed crumbs <laughs> that maybe he could go there. People at Auburn being fed crumbs, he could go there. And then all of a sudden, you start to see all these wide receivers commit to Notre Dame when they have no quarterback. People should have got it then. Yeah, he's, absolutely. He's going there. Now, is this an upgrade or not from Sam Hartman? I don't know. He's a better athlete than Sam Hartman. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But the dude threw for like a couple touchdowns last year. <laughs> like, what are we three talking about? Three, three touchdowns, three interceptions. And, and the, they have to, it's never a good thing when they have to throw out three years worth of stats <laughs> to make it look pretty like, he, uh, oh yeah. He threw for uh, 4,400 yards and 24 touchdowns. You're like last year. Are you fucking kidding me? No, no, no. Only three touchdowns last year. That's <laughs> over three years. You're like, what? That's, it's not great. <laughs> and 19 touchdowns on the ground. So yeah. he's, he's eight, at... eight touchdown passes per season. Mm -hmm. Well, so I think I think he didn't really play much as a freshman, but he had 22, he had 22 or 21 last year. And three this year. Which is def definitely a, a concern. Honestly, I think he's I think he's probably set up to be a better college quarterback than Sam Hartman because you can run a lot of the zone <laughs> read stuff with him. Yeah, he's that more is. athletic. He, he he gives you more to work with for yeah. sure. And he's a bigger kid than people realize, like 6'4". Yeah, but listed at two fifteen, he's probably closer to about two twenty. So we'll we'll see on that. Is it time for people to accept that Devin Brown will be the starting quarterback at Ohio State next year? I mean, people people are, people are tripping on online. Like, what the fuck? He's going. He picked Notre Dame over Ohio State. Like this, that, and the third. I it's because I don't think Ohio State really wanted him. I don't think Ohio State really recruited him that hard. Mm -mm. I don't think Ohio State's hitting the portal for a quarterback very hard. I think they really like the two kids they have. They like Eric's his potential as a freshman. Yeah. And I think they're they're watching practice saying, if this kid, Lincoln Kineholtz, can figure out how to throw the ball, if we can develop him, he'll be a great college player. And if Devin can just settle the fuck down and throw the ball accurately in games, he'll be a great college quarterback. I think they're really happy with what they have. I think so, too. But I don't think Ohio State, like the fandom, at least wants to hear that yet. No, they don't. I, I think, that but I listen. I, I, I only I, every now and then when I'm driving to and from the studio, I have on sports radio, and all people talked about was what quarterback they were going to get. Mm -hmm. No one ever talked about they might not go after one. How quick will that tune change? Like, like deep, like because it. I mean, it's going to change no matter what happens against Missouri. <laughs> they're not getting a quarterback. No, like it's done. Like, like we'll talk about it a little bit. Cam Ward's not coming here. Obviously, that was the topic of yesterday's show. No one's right. coming. So you gotta you gotta either believe in the room or think that next year's gonna be a nine and three season. One one of the two has to happen, right? Yeah. If you want to be an optimist at all, you have to believe in those two kids, mm -hmm. Devin Brown and Lincoln Kineholz. If you want to just be a pessimist and the sky is falling, chicken little this motherfucker, then just throw a fit and, and call for Ryan Day to get fired. I mean, there's certainly a section of Buckeye Nation that is doing both. It is wild. How much of an how much of an upgrade do you think Riley Leonard would be from Kyle McCord if he if he did end up at Ohio State? Like massive upgrade, like yeah, I middle, mean massive like, upgrade just because of the athleticism yeah. to evade a rush, lengthen a play. Like that's a massive upgrade to not just fucking throw the ball on the ground and take an intentional grounding anytime anybody blows on you. <laughs> Led the country. Led the country in intentional groundings. What a stat. Negative sixty-two yards rushing. McCord way. 
you're going the wrong way. <laughs> the most fucked up one, bro, was the one where he just like underhand tossed the ball to Trey when he was like <laughs> had to take a 13 yard sack and there was defenders there. It's like, why would you do that? <laughs> Throw it at his feet, dude. Yeah, like you just you just basically handed him the ball so you didn't take the sack and he gets the negative yardage. <laughs> right. Like that. Now I did have the one play to Cade Stover in a similar fashion that worked out. I thought it was a yeah. great play. Well, that one he wasn't running backwards for no. six minutes before he <laughs> no, did it. Very true. Like Kyle McCord did the Madden thing where you take the snap and see there's no real dropbacks in Madden. So you just run backwards <laughs> and then turn around and see what you're looking at. He did that and then just like threw it a yard to whoever running back it was. It's like, oh my God. Like, what was that? Yeah, it was well, a completion sack. Yeah, the compl one completion, <laughs> negative 13 yards. Right. I've never seen a completion sack. We call that the complete <laughs> sack. Oh, it was Chip, not Trey. Shout out to Chip. And if you're running back, you kind of get confused. Like, should I catch this? Is, it, is this a fumble? Like, what the fuck do I do? Well, I think you assume that you're going to catch it and you're open. There's no one behind yeah. you because that's why he threw it to like, you. Why would he throw it to you if there was nobody? <laughs> How you get up, throw that bitch back to him. Like, yeah, what the fuck you doing? Yeah, fucking up my stat line, yeah, bitch. Fuck out of here. I would have take, taken the flag for that. So, Riley Leonard and Notre Dame, does this, does this make them? Are they officially on the Zach Smith 2024 playoff watch list? Fuck Riley no. Leonard. What do you mean you said you're 10 and 2 next year? I mean, I guess with they the got that expanded schedule. playoffs. Yeah, I mean, of course they are. Everyone, like anyone that's worth a shit at football, like if you're even decent, you're on the playoff watch list with a 12 team playoff. Mm -hmm. You go through the, the schedule and you're like, okay, if you if they only lose two of those 12 games with no conference championship game to play in, yeah, they're probably in. Right. He should have went to USC, <clears throat> to be honest. He should have went to USC. And honestly, if USC had a defense, he maybe would have went there. Yeah. And, and and if I'm USC, if I'm Ohio State, I'm tampering with Zachariah Branch. Oh, you know, I'm hard. Like, I'm shocked she isn't in the portal yet because they're not going to be in next year. No. They're going you know, they're gonna to start next year. They're not going to transfer quarterback. Ever heard of a nigga named Miller Moss? Never. That's the starting quarterback at USC, maybe. Because <laughs> at least he's the one that's been ahead of Malachi Nelson so far. Um, Sam Hartman is opting out of the Sun Bowl versus Oregon State. Ends his 13-year college football career. He was a trestle recruit. He's been around for the long haul. Um, he, you know, he's going to get a pension from the NCAA. Sam Harmon had a great career. Where do you think he gets drafted NFL wise? Where would you draft? Third him? round. Third round? Yeah. After seeing Tommy DeVito play, I'm convinced anybody can play in the NFL. Anybody can get drafted in third, fourth round. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be probably, you know, it's, I don't know what he's going to run. And I think they're going to like red flag him for the velocity on the football. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, I mean, he looked to me. He feels like a guy that's going to end up on the New York or the New Orleans Saints or the Vikings as a backup. <laughs> and then randomly, week nine, Sam Hartman. No doubt. Quarterback. I can see him in Vegas. You think so? Yeah. Well, they already have their, like, weird quarterback. They have Aiden <laughs> O'Connell for the next, like, couple of years. Right. So they're good on the back of quarterback. <laughs> that's true. So, yeah, I'm looking at USC's football schedule. It's going to be a rough go. Is it? Oh, my God. They open up with LSU in Vegas. Week three at Michigan. Wisconsin at home. Penn State at home. At Washington, damn. I'm saying Notre Dame, like they lost five games this year with a week schedule. Crazy. Hey, not their butt. <laughs> Yo, it's about to get crazy, bro. It's about to get crazy, bro. I need the Alex. I need the Alex Grinch fan club to <laughs> to live tweet every game for sure. Holy shit! How many losses are they gonna have next year? Are you? It's weird, bro. It I mean, it's, you they're never not know. gonna be a contender next year. It just depends, right? We don't know if they're who they're going to randomly magically get out of the portal, or mm -hmm. it's just you, you never know nowadays until it's you know, until July, like in June and July, you can start to project where teams are going to be.